Hi everyone, it's Lena and welcome to another video. About two months ago I uploaded a video of me talking in Ukrainian about why I chose to learn Ukrainian. And since then I have received multiple messages asking me what resources I used to get on the level that I am on now. Which, by the way, is not very high. I'm somewhere between A1 and A2, I would say, after one and a half years. But I have to add that until this point I was entirely self-taught. So I will tell you about my resources for learning Ukrainian in this video, which I have to add, none of them are perfect. But still, if there's anyone looking out for resources, I will talk about mine and give you the pros and cons of each one. So I've kind of split this video into two parts. Um, one being online resources and the second one being books. And I'd like to start out by talking about online resources that are not directly linked to language learning. Because that's literally how I started. My first resource was actually YouTube. I just typed in like Ukrainian language or like learning Ukrainian or something like that. And there are a few people on YouTube who teach Ukrainian, like in form of video lessons. Um, and you just have to figure out for yourself whose style of teaching you like. Um, I personally have two favorite channels, one being Let's Learn Ukrainian and the second one being Speak Ukrainian. Speaking of videos, I actually figured that TikTok also turned out to be quite a good resource for Ukrainian because again there are a few people who make these short videos on TikTok on uh, different topics for Ukrainian language. Um, I would just say go into TikTok and type in like Ukrainian or Ukrainian language and you will definitely find something useful. You might not have expected what I'm going to say next, but I think that Facebook and Instagram also deserve a mention on this list, although it might not be immediately obvious. But I think that speaking practice and connecting to people who speak your target language is important early onwards and um, if you want to spare yourself the hassle of signing up for language exchange apps, more about that later, just go through your social media. For example, on Facebook there's uh, this Ukrainian learners group that I'm going to link down below. We're just a bunch of Ukrainian learners and native speakers in one group and we can help each other. Or on Instagram, just find people who speak that language and connect to them, follow them, reach out to them. I literally obtained quite a few words from random Instagram posts. But now I would like to move on to web resources that were actually concepted for language learning and the first one you will probably all know and that is Duolingo. I first used Duolingo for school for French and at some point I decided that I should teach myself Welsh and I've done that through Duolingo as well um, and I did not like it at first because I did not think that the stuff you would learn on Duolingo would be that useful but then later on I found out that Duolingo now offers Ukrainian in the English version and I decided to give it a shot again and I actually do think that the Ukrainian course of Duolingo is actually quite useful. I just made the mistake of starting from the very beginning and not doing the placement test. So you start out with letters, well you don't actually learn the letters. I mean it's, it is helpful 
if you already have a basic understanding of the letters, it's just a revision. Um, but I can show you what kind of topics you would have. Um, yeah, I lost some of mine because I haven't done it in a, in a while. Yeah, this is what I'm up to right now. And this is what would follow if I would actually get through these checkpoints. I think it's quite a good mix of both vocab and grammar. Um, however, I just have the problem that I learn a lot faster outside of Duolingo. Okay, it's still good for like revision, but by now I find a lot of the stuff too easy and I cannot skip ahead. That's a bit frustrating. But I recommend it if you're just starting out and would just like to practice basic things. And what I like the most is probably that they have exercises on cases because I am always looking for exercises on cases and it's really rare that I find some. But yeah, I'm just talking about my preference here. Next up, we have a site which I thought was very popular among language learners, but it actually isn't that much. At least every time I talk about Tandem on my Instagram story, I get some sort of questions. What is Tandem? I've never heard of Tandem. Can you explain it? Blah, blah, blah. Um, well, the basic concept of Tandem is to find a language exchange partner. Someone who speaks your target language and wants to learn a language that you yourself are speaking. Which I just think is a great concept in itself. Like you can learn from each other and make friends on the side. But yeah, it has a bit of a bad reputation and there are some big advantages and some big disadvantages to this. But since I've encountered a lot of people who are learning languages but have no idea what tandem or language exchange is, um, I will make a more detailed video about it, where I just talk about tandem and the advantages and disadvantages. But tandem in itself is actually set up quite simple. You have the community tab up here where all the people that speak your target language and learn your native language will be shown your chats um, and your profile i'm just showing you my profile for privacy reasons so here i have stated my languages and you fill in the profile here like some questions but you don't have to show that but it's more advantages if you show it on your profile in my opinion however what i found as a ukrainian learner on tandem who speaks popular languages such as german and english i found myself getting a lot of messages to the point where i actually closed my tandem to new people maybe that was just my experience but i just thought that is because there are a lot of Ukrainians who want to learn German or English um, but not a lot of people who have these languages as their native language want to learn Ukrainian. I thought maybe that is why this is such a desired combination <laughs> um, apparently but I still would rather have a lot of messages rather than none at all. But as I said, I will talk about Tandem in a future video in more detail. Next up is a website called Quizlet and that is actually not explicitly made for language learning, but a lot of people use it for language learning. For instance, I um, had to set up my account for my English class at uni originally and I have not used this for very long. so I cannot say too much about it 
I just switched over from the app Anki, which I previously used to make digital flashcards. Yeah, that's basically the concept of these websites is to make digital flashcards. Um, I personally think digital flashcards are a great way to learn new words like vocab, but it's just a very time consuming activity to write them, especially if you are writing Ukrainian and German or English words and you have to switch the keyboards all the time and you don't have the Cyrillic keys on your keyboard so you basically have to type blind. I can do it by now but kind of but I still make a fair amount of typos as well. So that's basically the main reason why I switched over from Anki to Quizlet because Quizlet just offers a lot more functions. For instance, on Quizlet it's basically all public so you can just search here for like Ukrainian and you get you already get flashcards that other people have created and you can import them into your own library. Okay, plagiarism, but it's it just saves you a lot of time of writing your own flashcards. For example, I have two stacks for now. Okay, the common phrases one I actually did write by myself. I took that over from my Yankee. Yeah, I can just show you. Um, this is my common phrases stack. I got all these phrases from a YouTube video by Let's Learn Ukrainian that I mentioned earlier. If we go back, if it loads, yes. Um, but just my miscellaneous vocab, I literally just got from other people's pre-existing stacks. I just took words that I don't know and imported that into my own. So that's quite practical. And in Anki, you literally have to do it all by yourself. But Quizlet cannot only be used for languages, also for like definitions and stuff, like for your history class or for your science class. But it really just comes in handy for language learning. And the last web resource that I would like to show you is a site called Link um, that was founded by Steve Kaufman, who is a polyglot and also makes YouTube videos about language learning. I will link his channel down below as well. So this site actually has a great concept, in my opinion. It's text paired with audio and digital flashcards. I will demonstrate real quick. So you have like all these different texts. Um, they are sorted by levels. So you have the easiest on the top and they'll get harder as you move down. Um, and you can import your own texts as well. So I'll just open the top one. And yeah, so you basically have these short texts and all the words that you don't know or that are unknown will be highlighted in blue. And if you click on it, you get the audio, like how the word is pronounced, and um, you'll get the definition as well. And it will be imported to your library as a digital flashcard. But here's the thing, and that's why I don't use it anymore, is that you, with the free version, you are very limited really quickly. With the free version, you can only have 20 digital flash flashcards maximum, and this limit will be reached very quickly, like after two or three texts. And basically all the very useful functions can only be used with a paid version. And that is quite a pity because I do love the concept. So not necessarily a free resource, but still I wanted to show it to you because of the concept. 
so that was it for my web resources and now moving on to some books that I'm using. I'd like to start out with the series Let's Speak Ukrainian. Those were a souvenir from Kiev. If you're wondering about prices, they were 280 hryvnias altogether. That was like just under 10 euros, I think. Basically, they just have like different units and each unit has something on phonetics, grammar and vocab and they have exercises at the end of each unit. So far I cannot really see something that I don't like about them except um, that I soon realized the first one was actually too easy and I'm now working my way through the second one. Next I would like to talk about one of my favorites and that is the Ultimate Ukrainian Notebook. At 33 euros this is a little bit on the pricier side but to me it's worth every penny. So you can get this either on BOD if you're in the EU or on Amazon if you're elsewhere and they exist in a bunch of different languages um, but I obviously have the Ukrainian one and I would say this is a mix of a dictionary and a notebook um, so they have a lot of different topics a lot of useful topics what I would say um, so the concept of it is basically on the left you have a bunch of vocab on a certain topic for example greetings what I have open now and on the right they have a blank page so if you accumulate any more vocab on that topic you can add it in for yourself and what I would do is I used erasable highlighter to highlight all the words that I don't know and if I got it down I would erase it so this is mainly for vocab really but um, it also has a grammar guide at the back Yeah, this is definitely one of my favourites. Um, the only disadvantage I could probably have is when I'm learning vocab from just reading, I tend to mispronounce it. Well, mispronounce is maybe the wrong word. Since phonetics in Ukrainian is actually quite easy, I would say, but I would often mispronounce the wrong syllables, like stress the wrong syllables. That's the only disadvantage to me when accumulating words by reading, but other than that, I have no complaints. This is my newest addition to the collection, and it is the Ukrainian English Collocation Dictionary by Yuri Shevchuk. Sorry if I pronounced that name wrong, <clears throat> but generally I've heard a lot of good things about his books, and I realized how did I go one and a half years of learning Ukrainian without a proper dictionary? I mean, I tried to find one in Germany, but did not really find one that was up to my liking until I stumbled across this one. I think it costs about 50 euros and it is available on Amazon and it came out last year, so it's very new. I have a bit mixed feelings about it, if I'm honest. What I love about it is that it is not just any dictionary. It's a collocation dictionary, so um, it does not only give you the translation to the word, but it is. it also tells you how it is used in colloquial language. And I'll show you an example. By the way, this is really big. This is my hand and this is the book. Yeah, just saying. <laughs> I'll show you an example. <laughs> So this is an example of how it would look like on the inside. As I mentioned, this more focuses on the usage of the word, not just the translation. So each entry would be quite long, it depends on the word. Like, some definitions cover half a page, if not more. Actually, here's a bit of a confession. In books, I never read four words or prefaces, but in here you have to do this because otherwise 
you'll just confuse yourself and you will not get the most out of this thing because it uses a lot of linguistic abbreviations that you need to know before usage so read the full word but I will show you an example of how it works let's take the word Maidan for instance um, it has quite a long entry that continues into the other page as well um, reason being for the length of the entry is that this particular word has four translations that's not even that many I've seen words that have like ten but they are all listed here and they are ordered by the order of importance and frequency that they are used for for instance the main translation of the word Maidan would be square place or marketplace and then it would list adjectives it would generally be combined with like holovni or centralny and followed by sentences with these adjectives for example centralny majdan kieva nazivaitsya majdanom nezaleznosti and then it would have the translation Kiev's central square is called Independence Square moving further down it would also have combinations with for example verbs or directions like Chodimu na Lvivsky Maidan what I find helpful is that I prefer the strategy of not just learning single words but the word combined into a sentence to get a better understanding of grammar but I can really come up with sentences myself so I find it really handy that they are given to me in this book hence why I would not want any other dictionary the only drawback with it is that it's Ukrainian to English only and not vice versa so I have a few more books to show you, but they are actually in German, so this might not be that interesting for those of you who do not speak German. But I'm going to show you them anyway. So this is probably the most common book on Ukrainian language in German that is out there. There used to be a book that was specifically designed for like A1 and A2, but they don't print it anymore. Um, so this is quite an old one. This is from 2007, I think, and it works quite similar to the Let's Speak Ukrainian series that I showed you earlier. However, I think this one has a little bit more precise explanations and I like the exercises better but it has one huge drawback hence why I'm not using this book anymore and that is that it has mistakes and especially grammar things are often explained I think the Russian way I'll show you uh, hold up um, for instance it has this text I actually love translation exercises but not with mistakes. For example, I have learned that if you say I speak a certain language in Ukrainian, it would be, for example, Ja hovoryu Nimetskuyu, I speak German. However, on here it is Ja hovoryu po Nimetskomu um, or po Nimetski. Is that a bit old-fashioned? I don't even know, I can't judge that, but it's definitely different from what I've learned. Or with this yich and yichni thing, that's something that even I as a beginner can spot. Yeah, but I'm not using this book anymore because of this instance. Next up we have a book by the same author of the previous book and this is just a short grammar guide that is supposed to accompany the exercise book but for this one my opinions are a little bit more positive because it just has the most vital grammar things and has really short and precise explanations about them sometimes i wish they could be a little bit more thorough but if i just have to look something up 
quickly it definitely gets the job done. Um, this one I bought new for about 10 euros I think. I forgot to tell you about the price of the exercise book, the previous one. That was also 10 euros but I bought it used. I think if you were if you were to buy it new it would be about 30 or 40 I think. So this one I have not had for very long either and it is actually designed for people who learn German as a foreign language and the concept is that it is a visual dictionary basically. It has pictures and the words underneath it and the concept is that you write the translations in your native language in it by yourself but who says that you cannot use it for your target language either if your native language is German, so that's what I do. I write in the Ukrainian translations in it. I haven't done it very much yet, but um, I have to get back into it just because I'm a visual type of learner and I just love that it has pictures and the words. So it works quite similar to the, the Ultimate Language Notebook, but okay, it has visuals. Um, and it also yields a lot more words and it's just much more precise. I just have to use it more frequently. And lastly, this is actually a German language book for Ukrainians and I don't use it too much for myself. But occasionally I would just copy out sentences that I find in this book that are written in uh, Ukrainian and in German. I would just copy these out just to learn full phrases for the use of a language, but this is literally the only purpose I use it for. And if those were all the resources that I either have used or use currently for learning Ukrainian, I hope it was useful. Thank you for watching and bye.